What's up guys, I'm James, and welcome back to the Great Gambino Watch Reviews. Today, we are going to take a look at another one of the new Seiko 5 GMTs. This is a very exciting line. I actually have purchased and reviewed the orange SSK005, which I will have a link to the video down in the description. This time around, we will be taking a look at the SSK003, or better known as the Blueberry. Real quick, I would like to give a special thank you to Feldmar Watch Company here in Los Angeles for letting me come in and check out this piece. No matter what type of timepiece you are looking for, Feldmar will be able to suit your needs. If you are interested in this piece or any of the other Feldmar watches I have reviewed, I will have a link down below in the description. Description. Even though my personal favorite is the orange, I feel it's quite possible that the blue version is the most sought after of the three. With a retail price of $475, it is a great deal for a mechanical GMT style watch with this popular colorway. Now that Seiko has the blue and black combination available, it makes me question whether a Pepsi version is on the horizon. Seiko 5 watches tend to be fairly reliable on a low budget with impressive specs. If like me, you have been intrigued by the newer Seiko 5 line of SKX style watches, but have not yet felt there was a reason to pull the trigger, this added GMT function may just be the upgrade you were waiting for. Real quick, I'll go over the measurements. We have a case width of 42.5 millimeters. Lug to lug is 46 millimeters. If you want to change out the band, it's 22 millimeters, and we have a case thickness of just under 14 millimeters. As expected with this case style, the crown is placed at the four o'clock. It cannot be screwed down, but it does have a manual winding feature. Let's hear what that sounds like. The bezel has a double row coined edge that is very familiar to anyone who has owned or handled an SKX model watch. However, the bezel insert feels very new and different. In my last video, I said the bezel is made completely out of hardlex. Unfortunately, I was wrong. It actually is an aluminum bezel insert that has been capped with hardlex, but it should still be pretty well protected nevertheless. In this shot, it appears to be all black, but the blue bottom portion is actually quite noticeable in most light conditions, and it has an overall metallic shimmer. This is a friction bezel, which means it is completely smooth in movement with no clicking. It is bi-directional and has a nice firm hold. The glass is a flat piece of Hardlex crystal. Hardlex is more scratch resistant than your typical mineral crystal, but not as good as sapphire. I have had plenty of watches with Hardlex and they have held up quite well. With this newer GMT model, Seiko has added a Cyclops eye at the three o'clock to give you a little magnification on the date, making it easier to read. When looking at the case, the top of the lugs are brushed and they blend into a thin chamfered edge connecting to the high polished side. There is a slight curve downward and Seiko has added drilled lugs this time, so changing out the strap will be super easy. Tying into the bottom portion of the bezel, we have a metallic blue dial that appears to have a mild hint of a sunburst effect. This blends in nicely with the matte blue chapter ring. And for a pop of color, we have a glossy red GMT hand and small GMT print above the six o'clock. All of the indices are applied and accented with silver trim. The hour and minute hands have silver trim as well. And the second hand has a touch of black, tying it together with the upper portion of the bezel. Of course, we do have a date window at the three o'clock that is enhanced by the Cyclops eye we talked about earlier. The overall color of this dial in combination with all of the other aesthetics has enough to add fun throughout your daily wear without being overstated. When pulling the crown out to the first position, it allows you to change the date by turning counterclockwise. If you turn it clockwise, it will change the GMT hand. Pulling the crown out one more time to the furthest position will allow you to adjust your main hour and minute hand. Once the crown is pushed in all the way, you are free to wind and charge up the movement. Flipping around back, you have a display case that shows off the in-house Seiko 4R34 24 joule movement. It has automatic and manual winding, it's hackable, vibrates at 21,600 beats per minute, and has a 41 hour power reserve. Of course, with the 4R34, we also have a GMT 24 hour hand complication. The Jubilee bracelet has a combination of brushed and polished links. The entire thing is solid and it tapers from 22 millimeters to 18 millimeters by the clasp. 
The sides are polished and you have four micro adjustment slots. When opening the branded flip lock latch, you will see the clasp is pressed. It's pretty standard to what you are used to getting with a lower end Seiko, but I am impressed that they upgraded to solid links. It's not going to be as hefty as something like a strap code bracelet, but it is still a much appreciated improvement. When it comes to the loom, I'm going to repeat the same thing I said in the SSK005 review. The indices, hour, minute, and GMT hand are all coded in Seiko's proprietary Super Luminova. With good quality loom and everything being a decent size, it's going to last well into the night and will be very easy to read the time. Here's a side-by-side -side shot next to an American quarter to give you a better representation of the scale. And here's a shot on my 6.75 inch wrist. This is one of those watches that has a very universal set of measurements. The 42 millimeter width causes it to be large enough to fit on someone who has a bigger wrist size, but the fact that the lug to lug measurement is a modest 46 millimeters, it can wear well on a variety of wrists, including smaller ones. All right, that is going to wrap up this quick review. So far, we have covered the orange and blue GMT. So if the black SSK001 is what interests you most, look forward to that in the next upcoming video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.